Hi everybody, all my followers, uh, welcome to another video. This video today is on a 2007 Vauxhall or Opel Astra. Uh, this is the Astra H with the 1.4 petrol engine, I believe is the Z14 ZEP XEP, I believe. Um, as you can see, the engine light is on and the ABS light is on. Um, I, I've not been asked to look at the engine light, I've only been asked to look at the ABS light. Um, apparently they've changed two uh, bearings already. Uh, oh, by the way, this uh, car is the one that comes with the ABS sensor uh, built in into the bearing. And apparently they changed the first one, didn't work. They got another one, didn't work. And now they asked me to have a look. Um, so yeah so the garage where this car came from um i've changed two bearings already um i'm gonna look at the fault codes first um i have upcom already connected let me take a little bit off the glare maybe some like that okay so let's gonna i'm on um i'm on a abs system already is fitted with the ABS MK70. It's gonna look at the fault codes. Okay, so there's two fault codes. Uh, front right wheel speed sensor malfunction. Uh, system voltage, low voltage. Okay, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is try to clear these faults. Okay, only one fault comes back on. Uh, the voltage one uh, maybe they have been playing with uh, the with uh, the car, and obviously, uh, I don't know, I don't know. But th this one came back on straight away. This is actually the first time I tried to delete the codes, and just to make sure, what I'm gonna do is, it's gonna close this. It's gonna close. Okay, let's gonna switch off the engine. It's gonna start the car again. And let's gonna scan the ABS module again. Let's see if we have that low voltage again. Yes, we do have. Um, hmm. Let's gonna look at the live data. Okay, I have 14 volts. It should be about right. Let me turn the engine off. Engine back on. It's reading 13 volts, 12.9, so engine is off, obviously. It's gonna start the engine to see what the drop is. Yeah, went down to about 8 volts. Uh, it might be that... Uh, it might be that is why is triggering that uh, low voltage. Maybe, maybe, but what well, let, let, let's gonna go first to the to the wheel sensors. So the four wheel sensors here. I'm gonna try to drive a little bit back and forth, see if we can see any readings. Okay, so as you can see, the front right wheel the value doesn't change. As you can see. So let's go and have a look at that. Um, let's go and have a look at that circuit. Um, due to the fact that they changed two bearings already or two ABS sensors already, and they still have this problem, um, I'm going to probably rule out the sensor for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that wheel off and I'm going to measure the circuit all the way back to the ABS module, and let's see what we're going to find. As you can see, uh, this has been all changed, all brand new. Um, you can easily see this has been obviously worked on, so it looks new. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to disconnect these um, plugs here. It's one ear, one ear, and then obviously it goes inside the car. And I'm going to start to measure these um, these wires, these circuits. 
I have you all connected to measure the first uh, wire, the first uh, wire of the circuit. And the pin is going to be this first one, straight after my finger. And as you can see, 0.4 ohms, which is just fine. Now let's kind of measure the next one. Okay, so I've connected the other one in there. Let's kind of measure here. Whoa, there is a problem. So the second circuit is showing 88.89 kilo ohms, which is no good. Okay, um, uh, in this case there's no chance that you are measuring anything else because it's a straight connection from the sensor back to the ABS module. So if you are getting even this measure here that means this is the correct wire and that means it's, it's going to be a broken or it's going to be oxidized or something like that so we're going to have to start to take things apart and try to find out where the problem is. Okay, I've just noticed this, and if you're going to be able to see, someone has been messing around with it. I hate when people do this kind of jobs when they don't know what they're doing. Okay, but at least we have a broken point in there. Uh, I'm going to be able to measure if the problem is forward that way, that way down to the between the wheel and this point, or if it's further down to the engine module. Uh, to the ABS module. Okay, so I still have everything connected into the wheel. As you can see, I still have eight, 80 odd kilo ohms when doing the wheel and the module. But when I get the signal from there, I get 0.4 so between the wheel and this point is all good so all I need to do now is obviously the problem is going to be the wire comes this way and I believe it goes all the way around the engine so the problem is going to be here somewhere okay so when I was um, looking at uh, follow the, the wire I've noticed I don't know if you're going to be able to see from here, but the AC radiator is bent. I don't know if you can see. So I looked into the car and it was visible that the car had uh, possibly an accident, I would say. And uh, you can actually see that quite well. So when I start to dig a little bit more, look at that in there. Look at that in there. So I think this is all metal here. I think that's where our problem is going to be. And I'm fingers crossed it's going to be there. So it's going to be easy to resolve. Okay, so... Sorry about that. There it is. That's where our problem is going to be. And uh, yeah, it's quite nasty. So what we're going to do now is we're going to strip this loom and repair the wires. As you probably have seen from my videos, I don't like to do a lot of editing. Uh, but uh, I'm going to show you the main steps. And this, um, not rocket science, just the way I do it. So we're going to strip this first. Okay, so here he is, the twisted pair with a broken wire, the twisted pair for the ABS. The other wire is not even damaged, so I don't need to touch. Then you have another wire here that is quite bad treated as well. So we're gonna repair this one as well. 
and all the other wires they look okay to me so we have two wires to repair and uh, that's what we're gonna do okay the first thing we do we cut the wires and um, we just uh, remove we cut the wire backwards as much as we need until we make sure we have the wire free of oxidization oxidization okay um, so until we have a clean wire uh, if you need to cut one two three centimeters just cut it back make sure the wire is free of uh, any contamination okay okay the first thing I've done obviously is I've um, like I said I've cleaned the wires um, I've used a little bit of this um, more known as a shrink tubing uh, there's two versions of this tubing uh, this one is the best one with the glue so as it melts it glues at the same time there's a, a layer of glue on the inside uh, I'm, I put a little bit on each side because this is going to be exposed to um, moisture and water uh, it's better to isolate these um, connections quite well and uh, I've uh, twisted the wires already put a little bit of flex and I'm ready to solder okay and I'm ready to shrink the first tubing oh come on the wind is terrible First one is done. Now we're going to repeat the process that is on this side. Okay, one is done. As you can see. I'm going to go do the next one. And who knows, this one is the one that was causing the engine light to be on. So it might be that we resolve two issues. Um, I will resolve two issues here. Okay, so they are both repaired. And uh, what we're going to do now is because this is an area, it's going to be a weak area now, even though we used uh, all this uh, glue, shrink tubing, and everything, uh, we don't want to take any risks. So I'm going to use PVC tape, insulation tape, because it's more uh, waterproof. And then we'll just put a layer of cloth tape like this on the outside just to make it look good okay and just before we put everything back on let's kind of measure again so the plug I pulled it up here there is now connected I'm gonna now measure on the second which is it's that one in there and there is 0 0.4 brilliant so there's no more brakes on this circuit and we should have resolved the problem it's gonna now obviously insulate everything and there is like I said I've used the PVC tape on the inside then I've used the cloth tape on the outside and uh, let's gonna try see what happens okay so I put everything back on and I think it's now time to try so let's go now Start the engine. And let's gonna go now there. First of all I wanna see if I have speed now on the wheels. If you remember was the front right. There we go. Everything is ready now. That sounds good. No, damn it. Okay, it's gonna go back, it's gonna go to fold coats, and uh, the first thing I can see is that the fold coats uh, are now for not present, both of them, 
so let's gonna clear the fault and hopefully the light will go off no DTCs and ABS light is off and just as curiosity let's gonna go into the engine see exactly what the engine has in there is the 14 XEP is that one battery is getting low on the laptop I don't know if it's going to be enough for this I hope so so there's a lot of codes here some of them they still present it looks like there is a faulty O2 sensor yeah so yeah we have a there's a fault there's a faulty sensor uh, eater circuit on uh, one of the actually is on the same bunk one bunk one yeah he's on the same uh, sensor uh, the light went off on the engine, but not sure if it's not, not going to come back straight away after starting. Well, it actually went off, but obviously these faults are present. But like I said, I haven't been asked to touch on the engine. Um, I'm going to do have just a quick look, make sure if there's anything obvious, but. But yeah, they, I've not been asked to touch this, so that's not important for now. Uh, the video was about the ABS light, which we had resolved. Uh, I'm going to go for a drive, just make sure the ABS works fine. But there is no reason why not. So yeah, um, I know it's not a great video. After all, it was only a broken wire, as is pretty much. Uh, but... Um, uh, hopefully there's some uh, usually information on the video uh, mainly how I do uh, repair the looms that's the way I usually do it especially if it's outside the car uh, engine bay and things like that that's how I repair the wires I always use that approach I never twist wires and tape them off that that's not the way you do I hate to see jobs like that um, I always solder the wires um, twisted only is a no-no out there uh, if it's inside the car obviously it's a different story um, but yeah guys I think that's it really um, hope you enjoyed the video any questions comments put them below and like always uh, thank you for watching